What's up, y'all? I kind of feel like we're all living in sort of two different realities sometimes. And one of the big political issues that exemplifies this the most is gun control. So we have Kellyanne Conway, this uh, this beautiful young woman, and apparently she's against background checks. After the recent incidents in El Paso and Dayton, uh, President Trump voices support for background checks. But after pressure from the NRA, he's changed his tone and talks about increased mental health solutions. Now, in my opinion, the mental health issue has nothing to do with gun control. We're going to save that for another video. All right, so Nancy Pelosi and Chucky Schumer met with the president and told him any firearm legislation that falls short of universal background checks will not get the job done. And so uh, Pelosi says, we made it clear to the president that any proposal he endorses that does not include the House passed universal background check legislation will not get the job done as dangerous loopholes will still exist and people who shouldn't have guns will still have access. Um, people who shouldn't have guns will still find a way to get them. But what Speaker Pelosi says about the loopholes, this is true. And then, of course, we finish it off with some good old-fashioned Rolling Stone spin here. They should call it the spinning stone. You know, oh, they appealed to Trump's ego. Voices like Conway's will have to be marginalized, however unlikely that is. It's unlikely that uh, Miss Conway is just going to shut up and go away and stop disagreeing with Democrats on political issues. So I'm bringing some data in this video that I don't think a lot of other people have talked about yet. And we're going to go straight down the middle. I'm going to be a straight shooter, no pun intended. And we're going to find out that this issue actually has multiple solutions and that those solutions cause multiple unintended consequences as well. So it's not just as simple as pass a bill, problem solved. Uh, all of this information applies only to purchasing a gun from Federal Firearms Licensed Dealers, FFL. So this is legal purchase, full name, address, birthday, all this. Uh, social security number is encouraged. Uh, criminal background, immigration status, mental health, uh, all of this can result in people being denied uh, their right to purchase. The seller is instructed to take notes if they seem to be intoxicated or shady or talking about a cheating spouse, you know, so they're not going to be able to buy a gun, obviously. And this process is completely different depending on what state you're talking about. People like to make criticisms about gun laws and say, oh, the gun laws are too lax. Well, then what state are you talking about? Because all the states have different laws and then there's federal laws that conflict with the state laws. So you guys want to make this a simple black and white issue. And we're just getting started here. So there's praise for the background check system, but there are significant gaps. So you are you ever going to have a perfect system? Is there a way to guarantee that the guy that checks out perfectly with his background check didn't have fraudulent documents, didn't steal his identity from somebody? Uh, there's there's only so much you can do. So buyers can skip the background check if they look for an unlicensed seller. So this might be at some kind of gun show, some kind of special event, some kind of, you know, seedy back alley somewhere. I just don't see how passing another bill will fix that. There's always going to be people are going to find a way around it. But the point is that the FBI should be able to check you out if you're going to buy a deadly weapon. People say, uh, you know, you shouldn't have to prove your innocence to the government in order to exercise your God-given right. That's a right. As I've said in other videos, the, the piece of paper, the document, is not where the rights come from. The rights are supposed to be given to you by God. And so is, there's a religious element to it as well that you have to keep in mind. This is just one of those stories where the more you look into it and the more research you do, the less it makes sense. It just There's a lot of conflicting information. And so how do we reconcile this? Well, let's dig a little bit deeper. Now, here's an interesting graph that I think explains the divide a little bit better here. We have urban firearm violence, we have suburban, and we have rural. So this is firearms possessed by state prison inmates at time of offense. So I guess they just ask them, where did you get this gun? We can add this number, this number, and this number. That's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 some percent of firearms purchased. 
have nothing to do with background checks anyway. They're buying it from their friend. They're buying it from their family, from a theft or a burglary, from a drug dealer off the black market or other. Maybe they, maybe they found it at a trash can. I don't know. Talking about gun control and, and background checks, you're talking about a small minority of the guns that are actually used in crimes. Across the board, the most common type of firearm is the single shot, like a pistol. By the way, all of these statistics are coming directly from the federal government. This is the Department of Justice here. You can see up top .gov. So we kind of cracked open the background check issue. Let's take a look at gun bans. Very first sentence, every place that's banned guns has seen murder rates go up. When people don't have a firearm to defend themselves, it makes it easy for the 80 whatever percent of criminals who got their guns illegally to attack them, kill them. I would also assume that if you ban guns, that the suicide rate would go down because it's just so easy to do with a gun. So there's two sides of that coin. You see what I'm saying? So we got some more fun graphs here. There's the handgun ban uh, for Ireland and Jamaica. Here's the gun ban again. And this one seems to be climbing. In this case, the, the firearm murders may have actually gone down here, but this is murders in general. So these are a couple of graphs talking about DC. I probably wouldn't say that banning guns uh, would increase deaths. You know. It, you would be eliminating uh, mass shootings for the most part. Great. That's awesome. But as you can see, there are some other uh, consequences here. Why not put some of these graphs in your article? If you're going to talk about the issue, talk about the issue. You know, don't make it about, oh, Kellyanne Conway is just so goofy and that Chuck Schumer is appealing to Trump's ego. It's just like it's pop culture fluff, whereas this is a ridiculously serious issue. Uh, a lot of incidents, these guys are getting their guns legally, so they're easy to obtain uh, if they pass a background check, and that's kind of an issue. So you can achieve that. You can reduce the amount of incidents, you can reduce the amount of deaths, and I'm 100% on board with that. But we just looked at a bunch of data that shows when you do that, you're also hiking up the homicide rate. So you're stopping one type of violence while you might be encouraging or making it easier to commit other types of violence. At the end of the day, does it equal out? Like, how much of a differential really is there when you factor in all these different things? Maybe it's just a fair trade. And if that's the case, it, it seems to me like this is not a black and white issue. This is not a, a, a good guy's, bad guy's issue. Most owners of these weapons are law-abiding citizens. In the mountains in Colorado, might, you, you might have a bear problem, you might have coyotes, you might have these, these vicious wild animals attacking your property, and you might need a more high-powered weapon to defend yourself so that some animal doesn't come in and maul your entire family. And then you have the issue of all the, the thousands and millions of guns that are already owned by people. Do you have to take them back? Do you take them by force? Do you put a gun to their head and say, give me your guns? It just seems like this is just an issue that's designed to sow division and make everybody scared and paranoid of their fellow citizens. So that's the video. I don't really have any answers. I just wanted to clear up some of the bias, some of the like irritating wrong information that was put forth by the Rolling Stone. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to stay on top of all the future uploads, definitely give this video a share. I think we need more musicians and artist type people being more educated on these issues. These are the pressing issues of our time. Maybe we all need to be a little bit more like David Hogg though, and politicize all of the victims of these crimes, get all kinds of donations and financial backing from the pro-gun control lobbies, and that's how you get the money.